on this is Mr. Neil Wright, it's here, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with bilateral blocked ears. Their symptoms uh, included not only hearing loss and tinnitus. So tinnitus is uh, typically a ringing or a buzzing noise in the ear, although it can be any type of sound. Um, that originates either with inside the ears or inside the head. That's not due to an external stimulus. In addition, they were also experiencing a bit of vertigo, uh, so a sensation of the room spinning around them, or uh, you spinning around the room. And uh, they put their symptoms down to their blocked ears. They, they've, they've had these symptoms previously due to the earwax, and in this case, a lot of dead skin as well, and upon removal, their symptoms alleviated. So the right ear was fully blocked. This is the patient's right ear. The left ear, which you'll see in a moment, I would say that was three quarters occluding. And as I mentioned, it's not only earwax, there's a lot of keratin, and it's quite difficult to distinguish between earwax and keratin, and that's because uh, so keratin's just dead skin. It's a protein that's found in dead skin. And the reason for that is because 60% of earwax is actually made up of dead skin, and the remaining 40% is a combination of an oily sweat, uh, if you have that particular gland, so a munis gland, it's the same oily sweat found under our armpits, and uh, more typically sebum, which is a, a fatty, oily secretion that's also secreted by the hair strands on our scalp. And... So therefore, because earwax is abundantly made up of, of skin, it is difficult to differentiate what is earwax and what is just dead skin. So I would classify this still under earwax, but I would say it's got a higher concentration of dead skin. So instead of 60%, probably 80%, you can see there's a large plug there. If you continue watching until the end, you'll see a still image of that. And, and the main difference, you, you, the way, um, so in, when you're in the ear, you can feel the difference. That's the first thing. Dead skin is quite bouncy, it's, or it can be quite crusty, one or the other, it can be the two extremes. And, um, and that's because dead skin's got, it's co not generally coils, and that has a lot of kinetic energy, so it's got a lot of spring and bounce in there if you touch it. Alternatively, it can dry and crust, so you, you get the opposite, so one or the other. And also, the appearance of it, it's really glossy, you can see that piece of skin there. Dead skin, the keratin, it generally reflects light, so um, it's quite a reflective, glossy appearance. Where earwax is probably a bit more matted, it, it, um, a matte finish, should I say, in, in appearance. And again, here, the left side, just put some oil in, and you can see it's quite shiny. Now, that in part is because I've put some oil in there, but even pre oiling the ear, just to soften the skin, it's got this glossy appearance. Um, I'm glad to say that the patient's tinnitus and vertigo had uh, alleviated, well, the, the vertigo uh, wouldn't have known straight away because it wasn't happening continuously, but the tinnitus, uh, the patient came in with the tinnitus and upon removal of the wax, the symptoms had alleviated. And we are just, again, wriggling some of the skin from the left ear. Quite a bendy ear canal, actually. You can see the eardrum just there to the left. So you can, it gives you some perspective on how bendy the ear canal is. So we're just going to be a bit gentle now because the skin is attached to the bony part of the ear canal. I'm just trying to detach it. There's a few hairs there also matted. And you can see those motions I'm using up and down, left and right. And that helps to detach the skin because the skin acts like double-sided sticky tape. Not only does it stick to the surface of the ear canal, it can also stick to the surface and envelope the pl plug of wax. So sometimes you remove the plug of wax and it comes off. The envelope of skin it still remains within the ear attached to the ear canal. And then sometimes, if that's a clinical need, we can go back and peel that. You can see some skin here now on the posterior canal wall. So the eardrum's just veering to the left. So again, you can just see on the left-hand side that cartilage, that you can see the flesh. That's the patient's second bend. So it's quite a pronounced second bend, that is. And so much so that we can't visualise the ear. The little pimple there for uncle, that's nothing to worry about. I'm just trying to, we're using a fine-end suction probe, just mopping around the perimeter. So we're going into the ear, this is the second bend, healthy eardrum, you can see the incus there, slightly retracted in appearance, the eardrum slightly pulled inwards, uh, so they've probably got a, a slight blocked eustachian tube. There's a bit of oil that um, the patient could feel a bit of oil uh, had collected deep in the ear, so I'm just going in with the suction probe, just gently in the inferior ears, you can see I'm suction, suctioning some of this oil. I have to be really careful those are right up to the eardrum. Uh, just some keratin on the roof of the ear canal. So in the cartilaginous portion, so this is more lateral near the entrance. I can apply a bit more pressure there. It's not 